Okay, it's hot out here today, so I'm going shirtless. But um, another big part of living off-grid and living in your RV is having a way to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, yes, most RVs have a little porta potty, but then you have a black water tank that you have to empty, and um, that's not always nice. So, there's something that's come along that I've only learned about recently, but I'm sure they've been around a while, and that's called a composting toilet. And they actually sell them. They're expensive, like $600 and up. But basically it's got a way that you have to, well, you don't have to sit on the toilet if you have decent aim. But um, for the guys, ladies, I guess you have to sit on the toilet. But they have where the urine goes into one hole. And that's, you know, put into a, separated into a container. And then the poo goes into another hole and in that container you have things like either peat moss or uh, sawdust or chopped up hay or um, uh, coconut husks there's different kind of mediums that you put in there and then every time you poo you can add a little bit more on top or you can you know they have a way to uh, rig up a thing to where you can mix it up a little bit. So it's kind of like a cat litter box, you know, like, you know, a litter box, but except you don't use clay like a litter box, although I guess that's always an option. It's more expensive, though. And then you have a vent fan going from the poo box to outside so that it's constantly bringing in air from outside into the poo box area. And then, and then sending that air back outside so that it dries the poo and takes away all the smell. And then you can go, you know, usually go about two weeks in between emptying those things. Well, I didn't know about a composting toilet, so I've always had my RV rigged up to where it went into a, a big heavy-duty tub underneath the RV. And then I could take that tub out and... Uh, you know, and then empty it and uh, I normally put two big contractor bags inside the tub had everything go into the contractor bags uh, tied them up and duct taped them up and then put them in with my garbage to be picked up the um, when I first started doing that I was like ah oh, man I don't want to put my human waste in with the dump you know with all in the garbage dump but then I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know, on any given day, you probably have thousands of baby diapers going into the dump, which is human waste also. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. But in order to not have to dump my container more than once a month, I would also usually pee into a separate jug, and, and then I could just dump those into the drain. And with that... This is, a, on from many other YouTube videos, I found out about this on my own, but the Arizona iced tea jugs, which you can normally get on sale for around $2 to $2.50, work perfect. They have a bigger opening than a milk jug. They're a lot sturdier than a milk jug, and they last forever. Um, this one here is several years old. A couple of years old at least. Um, I also use Arizona tea jugs for, uh, for water jugs, you know, for clean water. Um, while I'm here at an outdoor sink right now, I still keep jugs of water. Got a couple more down there by my outside washing machine. Um, anyhow, so one of the things that's going to happen with a composting toilet with a composting toilet or with pea jugs is you're going to get urine salts that are going to build up over time. It takes a long time for them to build up, but they will build up. So I've, 
I've seen different articles and this, that, and the other on how to clean urine salts, but I've never actually seen anyone do a video on it. So I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to empty the jug down the drain. You can turn away if you don't want to see this. <laughs> And by emptying it in an outside drain, I have emptied it on my inside drain before too, but by emptying it to an outside drain, yeah, you don't have any smell. You have very little smell from the inside drain. Okay, and so there's the bottom of the jug, and you'll see those orange stains on the bottom of the jug. And on the inside of the jug, you'll see the stains. Th those are the, ur the urine salts that have built up over time. So there's the empty jug on the right. And here's two products I've seen mentioned um, in different uh, blog posts and websites. One was uh, distilled vinegar. Of course, most of them mentioned the 20 proof vinegar or the 20 percent acetic vinegar but I can only find five percent so I bought it it was about a dollar forty at Walmart for a quart and then the other thing they mentioned was either muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid and this actual Lysol product, which is a drain cleaning product called Lime and Rust Toilet Bowl Cleaner. That's for when you get build up on your toilet bowl. Um, is actually made with 0.5% hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to try both of these and see which one does the job. Alright, so I rinsed out the jug with some clear water. Still, even after rinsing, there's still plenty of urine salts on the bottom. And for the past couple of years, I would always rinse it out a couple of times and then spray in a mixture of bleach and liquid dish detergent. But that still never kept the buildups from happening. So the first thing I'm going to try is is the white vinegar and yes you're asking why don't you just buy a, a new jug and that's true I could have probably bought a new jug of iced tea had the tea and then had a clean jug but I don't like throwing away too much plastics this jug is still fine so we're going to we put a couple ounces of vinegar. We're going to let it sit for a little while. Maybe a half hour or so. And see how it does. Okay, so it's been about a half hour or so, and this is the inside of the jug. Looks like there's still a lot of the orange urine salts stuck to the bottom of the jug. I'm going to pour it out and see what it looks like as we pour it out. So the vinegar was slightly discolored, gray, but not that much. And still plenty of the orange urine salt stuck to the bottom. So now we're going to try that Lysol drain 
cleaner toilet cleaner stuff. Okay, we rinsed out the jug a couple of times with some clear water. As you can see, still plenty of orange urine salts at the bottom. So now, we're going to try some of this stuff and see how it does. Okay, it's kind of a gel, so it's a little bit thicker than the uh, than the vinegar, and it's a blue color. So let's swish it around and see how it does. Swishing it around turned it into a foam. So it definitely looks like it's going to be better than the vinegar, but we'll it definitely made it foamy. All right, so we'll let this sit out for a half hour. Okay, it's been a couple of days and actually used the pea jug because I didn't think the last two things I was going to do worked, but apparently that last stuff, that Lysol uh, hydrochloric acid stuff, must have loosened it up enough so that when I used the pea jug again, it got rid of all the salt crystals. Now there's still some staining, as you can see. And um, one thing I read since I didn't have to use it, but one thing I read since the last, since the video clip before this, was that if you put some pebbles, uh, you know, or small rocks in the jug and shake it around, that'll loosen up everything so I didn't have to do that and it's pretty clean now although there's still some staining on the seam but I'll work on it again okay this is an update on the PJO cleaning and I didn't do anything to it since the last video after using that Lysol uh, hydrochloric acid drain cleaning stuff or toilet cleaning stuff anyhow um, most of it's gone um, I did just use it as a pee jug again and emptied it so that might have rinsed away a little bit more of it but as you can see most of it's gone this time I'm just going to add some pure bleach you know, maybe a quarter inch of pure bleach on the bottom and then uh, see how that does. But for the most part, I think that Lysol stuff did the best job.